you like chocolate? Well, for people like me, chocolate has become a delicious guilty pleasure that we have after a hard day's work. And I know some people don't like chocolate, but really, if you don't like chocolate, it's probably because you ate way too much one day and just barfed it all over the place. That happened to me with a friend once, but instead of chocolate, it was apple juice, and she barfed all over the car, and now I refuse to drink apple juice anymore. But now I'm one of the people who love chocolate. I even like the really bitter chocolate that most people find to be kind of bad tasting. But for all you chocolate eaters, chocolate might actually have some superpowers that you might not know about. And to learn more about these, we have to go into the forest of Central America. This is where cocoa trees originated. I'm going to be saying cocoa a lot in this speech, so get ready. So what grows on these cocoa trees? Well, cocoa pods, of course. And in this cocoa pod are cocoa beans. And this is the thing that we're going to be working with. So after we harvest the beans from the pods, you have to ferment them using a mixture of vinegar and some other things, it depends. And once it's fermented, which takes about five days, you have to let them dry for a few more days. This is a very long process. After they're finished drying, you can separate the outer shell of the cocoa bean from the inner part, which is the cocoa nib. Once you have the cocoa nibs, you have to roast them, which can actually just be done in your own oven. And once they're roasted, you can finally blend them. This is what makes it turn into chocolate liquor, which is basically like a melted version of chocolate. And don't worry, it is not alcoholic. And you might be wondering, how does these hard little cocoa nibs turn into cocoa liquor um, just by blending it. Well, it turns out the cocoa nibs already have some cocoa butter in them. So blending it just releases all of that and mushes them together, which creates this melty chocolate liquor. And since you now you have chocolate liquor, this is where the chocolate can take its many paths. It can become powder, it can become milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and white chocolate. But white chocolate should not really be called chocolate anymore because it has so little of the actual, like, cocoa in it. It should really just be called a white substance that kind of has the texture of chocolate. It's also really sweet, which is another reason that I like dark chocolate better than white chocolate, because I don't really like things when they're too sweet. And since dark chocolate is less sweet, then my excuse works better on it. So if you're eating chocolate and your friend next to you is like, oh, you shouldn't eat that because it's bad for you when it's so junk food, then you can just turn to them and say, well, actually, chocolate is a fruit. And they're gonna gasp and be surprised. And then you can eat your chocolate in peace without anybody pestering you that it's bad for you. But if you're trying to just binge eat chocolate and just using this excuse on your mom and dad, it's probably not going to work and they're just going to say, okay, no more chocolate for you. So maybe best to stay away from it. And chocolate also has some things like iron, copper, magnesium, and manganese, which are all also really good for your health. But I have one more question. Does anybody know what flavonoids are. Well, they're a chemical found in most fruits and it's great for your immune system and has lots of anti-inflammatory benefits. And it's also responsible for fruits bright colors. Legend has it that if you eat way too many flavonoids, you can turn rainbow. That's the goal I'm working towards. I think my palm's starting to turn a little bit orange, but I can't really be sure. But Chocolate, it turns out, also has flavonoids in it. So you can, whenever you eat chocolate, you can just think, this has flavonoids in it, and feel happy about yourself, because you're helping your body using flavonoids, and you're turning rainbow. But there's one more thing. Chocolate doesn't improve your memory, does it? Well, now that I've said it in such a an oddly mysterious way, you can probably assume that it does. So maybe I shouldn't have said it like that, but yes, chocolate can improve your memory. Turns out flavonoids, not
not only being able to make things really bright and colorful, can also improve your memory. So whenever you're eating chocolate, your memory improves bit by bit. And even though I eat loads of chocolate, I somehow still seem to forget things everywhere and I have a terrible memory. But I'm pretty sure that's because when I was born, I, was, I had like no memory at all and I would have just been like Dory and I had no memories. But since I ate lots of chocolate, my memory improves bit by bit and now I have a below average memory. So that's great. Like, I always seem to just put things down next to me and then it, like later I just can't find it. It just disappeared completely. There might be an invisible thing in my house just stealing all my things when I'm not looking. But who knows? Now this whole time I've basically been saying that like dark chocolate is maybe better than milk chocolate or white chocolate, right? But even though it has less sugar, it has more of the natural fats in it. So even though you're getting less sugar, you're getting more fat. So think about that. But what I recommend for your daily dosage of chocolate is to just get some cocoa nibs, which you can just buy at the store, and putting it in your cereal in the morning, or using it to decorate a cake, or a cupcake, or a brownie, or any other sort of thing that you'd like to put your cocoa nibs on. And this way, you can just get a little bit of chocolate and all of its benefits when you're just without eating way too much and getting sick. And that is all of the known superpowers of chocolate. Chocolate Man out.